Greetings everyone, this is Dean with Board Game Social, and I'm here today to talk about a card game that is currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. And the name of this game is Super Packs. It's designed and published by Tabletip Games, and it is a game of politics about the game of politics. Two to four players, plays fairly fast, less than an hour uh, for sure, even with new players. And it is one of those games that if you are interested in politics or the current election at all, this is a game that might scratch a major itch for you. If nothing else, it's full of satire and uh, bad humor and political innuendo. And while it doesn't come out and name the, the candidates uh, formally, you certainly know who they're talking about, either by the pictures or by the, uh, the exploitations and the events that happen on the card. So again, I'm going to walk through the game, show you how it's played, and then you make your own judgment whether or not you want to back the game or not. Uh, this is a prototype of the game. I believe the cards are pretty much finished, um, at least with the artwork and what they do, but the game board, the tokens, those definitely are prototype form. So. How do you play the game? Well, let's find out. So first things first, reminder, this is a prototype. So the game board, the, the game tokens will, uh, I'm sure, change. The cards themselves, I believe, will stay the same. So before we begin on the, uh, the rules and kind of a short, well, not even a playthrough, just the rules on how the game plays, some anatomy of the cards. You have leader cards. Every person's going to have a leader. This particular leader is the hair piece. Um, at the very top, you'll see where it says campaign. Campaign is a asymmetrical power that your leader is going to have. Each leader has a distinct campaign ability. The hair piece here can draw two faction cards and, or I'm sorry, draw a faction card and get a mega buck every time that he does it because he's the hair piece. He generates money. You'll also notice down at the bottom, it'll say a power. This is your superpower, the box down here at the, uh, at, at the bottom of the card. Every leader has a superpower. It costs this much in mega bucks. So this one costs two mega bucks to use it. And this power says profit. And for the, uh, for the hair piece, it says double the wealth of your green factions this turn. Again, the power, the superpower, and the campaign ability, those are asymmetrical per leader in the game. You're then going to have these faction cards that you're going to use throughout the game. Every faction card has different uh, abilities, whether it's generating votes, generating wealth, or generating power. The fist is the power. That's probably the most important factor in the game because whoever has the most power at the end of the game is going to win. The uh, mega bucks, the ability to fundraise can also be crucial, and the voting power is important if you want to win three of the elections before the end of the game because um, that's what generates your votes. So you'll see they're all kind of different. You'll also then down at the bottom of the faction card see this symbol. That means an exploitation. You can use this exploitation to do the special thing at the bottom of the card. So this one says it's the climate change deniers is the faction and their exploitation is you draw a faction, add it to your coalition, and if it is red, you get two mega bucks. Red, obviously, in this uh, game is going to be traditional, meaning conservative Republican. Blue is going to be liberal Democrat. Green is kind of the wealthy uh, people. And there are probably, I think there's gray for independence. So each card is going to have, each faction is going to have its own special ability and what it generates will vary. And that's pretty much the symbols that you need to know for the game. Okay, so how do you play the game? Well, first off, the object of the game is to generate the most power at the end of 10 rounds. That's how long the game is going to last. Each round is one cycle around the table, with each player getting their individual turn. The setup of the game is pretty simple. Every player is going to choose a leader. Uh, the rules say to give each person two leaders, let them pick one. Uh, really, you can do it however you want, but that is how you're supposed to do it. So everyone's going to get a leader, and everyone's also going to start the game with two mega bucks. In addition to your leader and your two mega bucks, each player is also going to draw five faction cards at the beginning of the game. So with these five faction cards, you're going to use them to build your coalition or your tableau on the table. Real simple, first player, let's just say the first player here is uh, the hair piece. 
So the hairpiece has two choices at the beginning of his turn. You have the initial action, and then you're gonna move on to the main action. The initial action consists of two choices. As you'll see here, they give you some gameplay aids as well. So on your turn, your initial action is you can either campaign or you can embezzle. Embezzling is very simple. You're just gonna draw two mega bucks into your hand. Campaigning is where you're gonna use the power at the top of your leader card. So for the hair piece, it says you draw a faction and you get a dollar, okay? For the zombie neurosurgeon, it just says you're gonna draw a faction. That's the only thing you can do if you're gonna do that campaign. Uh, for the big talker here, it says you can draw two factions and one of them, I got it right upside down. Draw two factions, put one of them on the bottom of the faction deck. So I can draw two, Oh, I definitely don't want my opponents to get this card. Bury it under the bottom of the deck and I keep the other one. So you can campaign, play your, do your power, or you can embezzle and take two. That's your initial action. After you do that, you then get your main action. And this is really the crux of the game, the main action of your turn. You can do three things in your main action. One, you take your deck, your hand, and your money's supposed to stay in your hand as well to hide the amount that you have from your, uh, from your opponents, but you can play, or you can do three things. One, you can fundraise. Fundraising, very simply, is as the game goes on in your tableau builds, let's just say you have all these in your tableau, as your tableau builds say you need to raise money, you can fundraise, and you can take one, two, you can get three dollars out. Not sure if it'd be worth it, but that's what fundraising is. You just look at the amount of money your, your factions and your coalitions, uh, generate and you get that into your hand. The other two things that you can do in the main action are where the, the strategy and the replayability comes into the game. And as you can do either two, you can sneak, meaning I can take two factions out of my hand and I can play them face down into my coalition. My opponents can't see what they are at this point in time and with that, when you sneak, you're gonna get both of them into your coalition, but you're going to give up your ability to play this exploit, to use that power. Remember we talked about the ability to use the power of the exploit. If you sneak them into your hand, you lose that ability, okay? The other thing you can do is you can exploit. So instead of putting two face down, you're gonna play one card face up, goes into your coalition, but you automatically get to play that exploit at that time. That's the only time you can play the exploit is if you do it during the main action and if you play it into your hand that way. So I could play this into my coalition and I could get tie. that's the mega churches. Tie. get one mega buck for each um, religion symbol, I think it's, or belief symbol, excuse me, the praying hands, one mega buck for each belief symbol in all coalitions. And that says all coalitions. That's not just mine, that's everybody else's. So that could be a very powerful card if played at the right time. Okay, so at the end of the main action, just to recap, you can either fundraise, generating the money out of your coalition's ability to, to uh, give you mega bucks. You can sneak, meaning you can play two factions face down into your coalition. Or you can exploit, meaning you can play one card face up in your coalition and get to use the special ability, special ability at, the end, at the bottom of the card. So, advantages, disadvantages, sometimes you just need to get more coalitions, uh, a bigger coalition built, so you need to sneak more factions in. Sometimes you just want to be dirty because you're going to exploit something to gain for either yourself or to hurt your opponent. During your turn, there, there is also one other turn or one other thing that you can do, and you can do this anytime during your turn. So you can wait until you generate some money to do it, but that is buying an investment. The investments are down here on the bottom of the, of the game board. These are things that are crucial to you probably winning the game. This is how much they cost at the top. So then you see they vary, and it's probably gonna vary based on the things that they can do for you. And at the bottom, it's going to tell you what it's going to do. Generally, the investments are always going to somehow help your power, which you're going to need at the end of the game. So, for example, this one only costs three mega bucks. And at the end of the game, well, when you buy it, it says draw a faction card. So you immediately get to draw a faction. And it's worth two power at the end of the game. Not a big help, eh, a little bit, uh, but it's cheap. 
This one here says sports franchise. Gonna cost you seven, and it says pick a color. I can't read it upside down. It says pick a color worth two power for each faction of that color in your coalition. So this one is pretty powerful because if you have a lot of red, you can pick red for the color, and that's gonna make each one of those worth two more extra power at the end of the game. So there's different things. Some of them align with the leaders. This one is cost you five. It says draw two factions cards. At the end of the game, it's worth either three power or it's worth five power if your leader is a blue leader. So it'd be good over here for the presumptive nominee or be good over here for the big talker because they have blue as their power. So there's different. As you buy one, you then fill the, the uh, board with a new investment. Sometimes these get overlooked during gameplay because everyone gets caught up in exploitations or, or just trying to build their coalitions, but these truly are crucial to you being able to win the game, so you cannot forget about them. And you can buy them at any point in time during your turn. And then finally, during your turn, there are two special actions that you may have the ability to use, but they are triggered at specific times. One of them can be uh, is your superpower, and your superpower, remember, is at the bottom of your leader card, and it'll say can either be played during your turn, can be played during an election. This is the amount of mega bucks it's going to cost you, and then every leader has its own little take on its superpower. The other special power is a surprise, and a surprise will be found at the bottom of a faction card, and it'll look like a little jack-in-the-box sort of jester symbol down here. And then again, it'll be specific, it can be played during an election, it can be played in the middle of someone else's turn, because they are, they're different things. So, like, for example, this is the Libertarians. It says, discard to nullify an exploit, surprise, or superpower. So you're going to play this out of your hand when someone else is doing something that you don't like. Maybe they're exploiting something that will give them too much money, maybe they're exploiting something that's going to hurt you, maybe they're using their superpower, whatever, you can keep this card in your hand. When you play it, you immediately play it, it goes into the cemetery, it goes into the cemetery, and you cannot play it in your coalition. That is the downside to the, the surprise. Never going to be in your coalition. Once you play it, it gets discarded. So it's a common, you know, do you want to save it? Do you want to use it? Maybe I need it, maybe I won't. Or do I play it into my coalition and get the definite benefits that it gives me? So again, some of the strategy in the game. Another, uh, another surprise, this one is the Comedian Newscasters. This one allows you to discard it during an election. So when the, the three elections happen during the game, you can play this surprise and it will choose a faction. It contributes no votes. So the political comedians here, it looks like, uh, what's his name, uh, John Oliver and whoever the guy is that took the other show over. Uh, they are going to nullify an act or a, a faction during an election. So again, it's a surprise if I played it, it would go there and I wouldn't be able to generate those uh, other powers. So plain and simple, that's all there is to the game. There's an initial action, campaign or embezzle, a main action where you can exploit and play one card in your coalition and get its power. You can sneak and play two cards in your coalition face down, not be able to ever use their power, or you can fundraise. And of course, you want to make sure you remember to buy these investments because they are crucial to probably winning the game. And make sure you remember that you have a superpower that you can use at certain times, and always be aware of the little symbols at the bottom because they may be a surprise and not an exploit, and that could be beneficial to you as well. So you'll see some of the, uh, some of the special exploits this one is the uh, the hipsters. You get two mega bucks for each faction in your coalition. That there is only one of its color, okay? Because they're unique. They're special. They're hipsters. Uh, let's see here. You have oh the paparazzi. You get two mega bucks and you get to move the scandal token to any leader in the game. So speaking of the scandal token, and, and let's take a look at those quick those tokens real quick. And see what they are. So you have promoted. Promoted is you get plus four votes during an election. You have blessed. Your leader superpower costs one less, so this would now only cost one. You have the investor. Your your uh, leader can now purchase these investments for one less mega buck. You have retired. Your leader cannot win elections 
or use a superpower. And I see this one get played a lot because uh, usually there's a card in there where you can generate a lot of money from it, but they can never win the elections. But that doesn't mean you can't win the game. Because remember, it's not about winning the elections, it's about gaining the power, the power behind the scenes, the power of the super PACs. And then you have scandal. When you have scandal, your leader's superpower cannot be used. And you have smeared. Smeared gets you four less votes during the election. All right, so everyone's gonna take their turn. Everyone's gonna play, uh, play a round. When it gets back to the, to the start player, anyone who played any card sneaked is gonna flip them over, put them in their tableau, and then you're going to do an event. There's generic events and then there's elections. So this is a generic event. It's the boom time exaggerator. So for the next round, players cannot buy investments. All right. You have the globe sun star. Each player destroys a faction belonging to the opponent on their right. Now that can get kind of nasty. And so on and so forth. When you play, after you play the first three events, you're then going to get to the first election. And that is the House of Representatives. How do you win this card? It's very simple. Every player is going to look at the cards within their coalition, not their hand. They haven't been played yet. So only within their coalition. And they're going to add up the number of votes they generate. So this person gets two, three, gets five, gets nine votes. If they have the most votes, they're going to win this card into their hand. It's not going to give them any money. It's not going to give them any votes, but it is going to give them five power. And that is the House of Representatives. So they've been elected. That'll play in there. And this little symbol here, this diamond with a, I don't know what that is, the diamond with a I, means it's indestructible. It can never be destroyed as a faction. You're then going to play a couple more rounds. You're going to go around. And then the next election is the Senate. It's calculated the same exact way. By now, your coalition's getting bigger. You're generating more, more votes. And whoever wins this one is going to get 10 power at the end of the game. And so let's say this person wins. You're going to play two more rounds. And then you're going to get to the final election. The final election is for the President of the United States. Calculated the same exact way. Remember, some people are going to be able to play superpowers during these elections. Some people are going to be able to play surprises during the elections that could hurt. Um, if you win this one, you get 15 power. You add it to your coalition. That is the end of the rounds. You then go into the final scoring. Final scoring is tabulated very simply. You add up the amount of power within your coalition. Remember, investments can add to your power. They generally um, are going to be modifiers to it. This one is just going to give you straight up eight power. This one is possibly going to give you three or five. Uh, some of them are variable, like this one, where it could be two power for every one of those colors that you picked. Um, and there are different ones. There are some that give you... Um, this one is worth two power for each faction that matches your leader's color. So let's say you have a green leader and you've got a bunch of green faction cards. For that one, you're gonna get two power for each one of those. That's in a Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is Super Packs, the game of politics about the game of politics. Two to four players, table tip games, currently seeking funding on Kickstarter. And let me say, I really enjoyed the game. I truly did. I pl played it with multiple different players at different uh, different levels, two, three, four. Um, my son played it, and my son is almost 16, and he, <laughs> he really enjoyed it. He was laughing at the different cards. Every time we played, there's little different things that he noticed on the cards. Um, and there for a while, yeah, he wasn't even really worrying about trying to... to play by the strategy of the game, he was simply playing by, well, this, this person would never, would never do this, or this person would definitely exploit this group of people, so I'm gonna play it. And we really had, it. and the funny thing is, is that the scores were still close. So it's a well-balanced game, even though there's asymmetrical powers um, within, the, within the leaders. That brings me to the next point, the leaders that are in this game. If you are following the 2016 election at all, well, you're going to see pretty much everyone that's involved in within this deck of cards. There are, um, as I like to say, there are, no, there are no sacred cows that go unskewered in this game. It is equally, um, 
I wouldn't say offensive, but it's equally satirical towards every person that is involved in the uh, 2016 race. Um, they, they really don't pull any punches. The super PACs, the special interest groups, they don't pull any punches. So um, if you like political games and you are not, I wouldn't say offensive, Offended, but maybe that is the right word. You're not going to want to play this game with someone who can't take a little bit of political ribbing and joking and pointing out that, hey, even your party or your faction has flaws because this game tries to knock everybody down in that in that vein. And that's the key to being a good political political game. So if you play with the right group of people, you're going to have a blast. If you play with people that are touchy and you know get, get bent out of shape about that sort of thing well maybe not so much but it is a fun card game it is a re-theme kind of a re-skim of a or re-skinning uh, of a european political card game and i think that's why it plays so smoothly and is so well balanced is because it was successful in that venue as well um, the artwork the artwork is from four different political cartoonists so it definitely has has that political cartoon vibe to it like you know with, with the hair piece you know it definitely it looks like a political cartoon and my son gets a kick out of that because he's building the wall out of gold bricks so um it is it's a smooth game it's a fun game it plays fast once you play around you understand how it plays and there is replayability because there's so many different leaders but there's also depth and strategy to this game because you have to decide do i want to sneak it do i want to lose its power do i want to exploit it and use its power uh there's just different ways and i've, I've tried different strategies the various times i played it and they they all work to a certain degree um, so there is, I haven't seen one approach that is a guarantee to win the game, which is good. I, I definitely enjoyed it. Um, I, I just, I, I, you know, I, I'm a political junkie, so I enjoy that sort of thing. Um, there, there are lots of little in jokes within the cards and the artwork. If you take your time to look at them and perhaps my, my favorite card in this game has to be the zombie neurosurgeon. The zombie neurosurgeon who, if you look closely, is performing brain surgery on a little tiny elephant. So I chuckle every time I see that, and I may blow that up, find a way to blow that up and make a poster out of it, because I just, I find it funny. That being said, again, Super Packs, check it out on Kickstarter, see if it's something that you might want to, uh, might want to look at. Again, it's a fun game in and of itself, and it does a very good job at documenting the craziness of this current 2016 election. So my name is Dean. This has been Board Game Social. Take care of yourselves and go out there and cast your vote for Super PACs. See you.